afternoon, everybody. Hello. Hey, uh, welcome to uh, Shields Live again. Uh, another beautiful day out there. A little sticky, but uh, better than the alternative. Um, once again, just uh, just like to say hi and and uh, hope everybody's doing well. We got Mother's Day this weekend for all you mothers, and a uh, reminder for those who need to you know get something for your mother. Um, should be a nice nice weekend. Um, I, I have sent out a few things, some different promotions going on for Mother's Day. Um, with Arrow, Arrow's doing some nice deals on their chairs, as well as some financing with Brother and whatnot. But, um, but yeah, so today Jan's going to talk about the Brother 950 uh, BQ 950, which is a, another quilt machine, sewing machine. I'm just going to give you a few more uh, options than uh, more than uh, the 700 that we did last week. So, um, but still a really, really nice machine. Still gives you a lot of nice quilting stitches. Um, you know, some, some of my favorite things, sideways sewing. I don't know if she's going to show that, but. Oh, um, yeah, we got to show, gotta show that. Got to show that for sure. So uh, anyway, uh, thanks for joining us and uh, we'll see you later. Thanks, Bye, Jim. Okay. See if we can, we were having a little technical difficulty, so we didn't get in right at, right away because we were, Tim was having a little trouble with his computer. So I think we got everything going now. All right, so we're going to talk about the nine, the BQ 950. So it's a step up from the um, PS 700 that we looked at last week. So a lot of the features are very much the same. So I'll show you a few of those things. Um, but I'm also going to show you the things that are different about the machine. And it also comes with a few more accessories. And it is also nicely set up for the quilter. But so I'm going to talk most, um, I'm going to, you know, we'll thread the machine and put the bobbin in again just to review that so you know that. But I wanted to show you some of the things that are different between the 700, the PS700 and this machine. Okay. And then we're going to do a little free motion quilting. I'm going to set it up for free motion quilting. And then also I thought maybe we would um, put the walking foot on and maybe we'll sew on a button. So last time we made button holes. And so then we, of course, you need to sew your buttons on. So I thought maybe we'd sew a button on because there's a special foot for that. So just show you a few of the things about the machine. Okay. So give me a second. I'm going to switch my camera over. Let me get my banner off here. And we'll switch the camera over to the machine. And I got to find the comments. I haven't found the comments yet. All right. Let's see. Got to get the right microphone. So hopefully you can hear me okay. All right, let me get to the comments. Oh, hi, Lois. Okay, <clears throat> so here we are at the 950. So it look, probably is going to look quite a little bit like the 700 that we we looked at last week. A lot of the buttons are the same in the, on the, the screen, okay? Still has the cutter, needle up and down button. It has our two, this is, you know, the tie the knot in place button. Here's your reverse button, start, stop button, okay? Put, raise and lower your presser lever in the back, like this. But this one's going to have a couple of things that the 700 didn't. So there's going to be one obvious thing that you're going to notice right away if you look at the top of the machine. Can you see this little area right here? Oh, thanks, Jackie. So this little area right here, see there's no tension dial there. So this machine also has um, auto tension. So the tension is digital. So we can still change the tension, but it, it, but it sets the tension for me as I choose my stitch. So if you look down here on the screen, so there's no dial up here, but if I look down here, this third little button right here, there's sets of buttons that we talked a little bit about last week, the width of the stitch, the length of the stitch, and then this is the tension. So this tension can be changed right here and it sets it automatically. So as you change your stitches, often this, this number will change because they set the tension according to the stitch. So that is one difference that this one has over the 700 is that it has the auto tension. There's no tension dial up here. And then it is adjusted for you um, automatically down here. And then you can change it still. Okay, so that's one of the big differences. The other difference in this machine is this one has the ability, and we're going to do that here in a minute, to sew sideways. So this machine can sew this direction, this way, as with a straight stitch, and also a zigzag. 
So let's say you're putting on like a patch and you can't get your item turned to sew straight forward all the time. You can sew to the side, back and forth with these little little stitches right here. So we'll, we'll do that so you can see that. That's one of the, the other differences. And then the other main difference too, and we talked a little bit about our letters. We did some letters last time. The lettering on this machine is upper and lower case letters. So the other machine that we did last week only had upper case letters, but this one has upper and lower case letters on it. So that's another difference. And it might have an extra font on it. I'd have to look. I think this one might have an extra font or two on it too. But this one does have upper and lower case letters. So that would that's also a difference. Okay. So the, the basic workings of the machine are the same with the saving and everything. So we'll do a little bit of that too, um, just to refresh from last week. Um, but then I'm going to show you a few, a, a few different things. Just do a little sewing and we'll do some sideways sewing. So then some of the, the decorative stitches, and I don't know if you can see up here very well, but since it's so sideways, some of these decorative stitches are slightly larger because the machine can travel this direction, unlike the other one. Okay, so some of the decorative stitches, there's more decorative stitches on here because it has the, this ability to go sideways. Okay, so let's just do a little bit of what we did before. So just refresh everybody. And you know, if you're watching this for the first time and you didn't get to see this last week, we're going to wind a bobbin. So let's just wind a bobbin. If I can find one, I think there's one in here. Here we go. So we're going to wind a bobbin. So here's my bobbin. I'm going to put it up here and remember... If you put it down and twist it, listen quite carefully, it actually snaps into place. There's a little there's a little wire right here. And when I put that bobbin down, it snaps into place. So you want it to snap in so that it winds more properly. And then I'm gonna go ahead and, ooh, I don't know if I got my caps out. I just have the medium cap today. Last week I showed everybody I like the smaller cap and I didn't bring my little baggie out, so. We're going to have to use the medium one. Sometimes this likes to catch a little bit. So it's better to use a cap that's about the same size as your spool of thread, the diameter of your spool of thread. So we'll do one and two. This is just like last week. Behind the thing sticking out. And then down in between the button and the little thing sticking out here. And then pull it underneath the button and make sure it's really under there because then you've got tension. Wrap it around the bobbin. Oh, maybe six or seven times. And then there's a little cutter underneath. I'm just going to slip this, the thread under there and cut it off. Okay. Push this over. And then it turns our button down here, yellow, kind of a yellow orange. And then we can wind our bobbin. This is the speed control, just like the other machine. Okay. We can adjust that. When you're done winding your bobbin, you hit the same button. If you have your foot controller hooked up, and I just don't happen to, um, then, of course, you would let up on the gas. Okay, so we're going to take our bobbin off here. And this, I thought we better review from last week. You know, here we're going to take our bobbin off. Okay. I've already got a, one that has more thread in it, so we'll use that one. Okay, put this one back up here. So then we're going to put our bobbin in. Okay. Same way, we're going to make the letter P in front of you with the tail off the left of the bobbin. I'm going to lay it down in the bobbin case. Let me put this down so you can see. Okay. Lay this in the bobbin case. And then there's a little trail that shows you a little arrow trail to go. I'm going to put my finger on top of the bobbin and pull it around into that little catch and cut it off. There's a little cutter right over here. Then I'm going to put my little bobbin door back on. And we have our bobbin in. Okay. To thread the machine, we're going to start out. This is the same threading mechanism, the threading threading um, path as the, the last week's machine. And we're going to start one, two. And if you haven't seen the video, it is on the Shield Sewing Center Facebook page where you are right now watching this video. And it's also on my YouTube channel called Sew Along with Jan under the playlist shields live so it's also there okay so i'm going to go one two and it's going to go around here and now remember when we have when we're threading the foot is up because we want to make sure that it goes into this little tension unit in here okay 
one, two, three is straight down. And then along around the bottom here, I'm going to come back up. And then four, I'm going to kind of swing my arm from right to left. And it's going to, there's a little lifter in there and it's going to go into that. As you can see, my little door, we talked about the door last week too, is open. So then you know you're ready to thread. Okay. I'm going to go straight down for five. And this is the one that's hard to see. Number six is the little, the little um, thread guide right above the needle here. Okay. So like when I get down to here, I like to put my foot down. So I have a little tension and then it's easier for me to get that piece of thread into that thread guide because then I can just kind of pull it in because there's a little tension here now. Okay. Now, before I thread my machine, I'm going to use this needle down, needle up. Since I've moved this machine from one side of the store to the other, I'm going to hit the needle down and the needle back up again so that I know that my my needle is in the upright position. And I do that almost every time I thread a machine. That way you won't you won't come down and break your needle threader. Okay. So I'm going to go across this little notch. Let's see if I can get the camera just a little lower so you can see it. Okay, this little notch right here. There's a little notch right here. And then the number seven is on this gray piece and I'm going to push it into that. So across the notch and into number seven. And then there's a cutter on the side of the machine. I'm just going to cut the thread off, let it dangle. Okay. And then I'm ready. Let me turn the machine a little bit so you can see. Here's number nine. Go a little higher. There we go. Number nine right here is this little button. We're going to press it down until it clicks. And that threads the machine. Okay. So this is a very, this is, this is one of the more, um, common needle threaders on on the brother and baby lock machines because a lot of them have the same needle threader on them okay but remember needle up and down before you try to thread your machine especially if the machine has been moved if it's been in the car um if it's been shipped but i do it almost every time and that way you protect your needle threaders from getting bent okay all right so we've threaded our machine just like we did before we have got it we wound our bobbins Okay, so now I want to show you, um, we talked about the three things, the three main differences of this machine over the PS700. So I want to show you those three things. So the one thing I want to show you on this machine is the sideways, sideways sewing feature. It is really cool. And I often use it for when I need to sew something on and I can't quite get into the, um, I can't get things turned the way I want it. Okay. Then I don't have to turn it. I can do the whole thing. I can go around in a square with the, the fabric, the same direction. So last week we talked a little bit about these menus. Okay. We did a couple stitches and each one of these menus has a little menu icon on the top left-hand corner. And then there's a corresponding button on the screen of the machine. So this is going to look very familiar to you. Okay. The main one that comes on when you turn the machine on gives you the stitches that are on the 10 buttons down here. Okay. Just the little keypad buttons, you know, your straight stitches, your zigzags, your stretch stitch, stretch zigzag, that type of thing. When I want to get into the other um, stitches, I look up at the top on my, the top of my machine and it, I look at the stitch I want and look for the menu. So in my case, I want to sew sideways. So my, my stitches are going to be in this first menu. So it looks like a straight stitch, a zigzag, and a buttonhole. So I'm going to touch this button first and make it blue. And then I'm going to go up here and I'm going to look. And I want to sew to the left. And that is stitch number 93. So I'm going to type in the number 93 like that, okay? 93 is going to make my stitch go this direction. It also is gonna tell me what foot to put on my machine, just like the other one, and it tells me to put on the letter N foot. And I'm going to grab my N foot here, and we're gonna change our foot off so we know. Now this one looks like it's going down, so I wonder if I have the wrong top for this. This is weird. Don't think so. It was laying right behind it, so it should be right. But we'll we'll take a look. 93 looks like it should be going this direction, but it looks like it's going down. So we'll see what happens. 
I wasn't expecting that. Okay, so let's see what happens. So I got my end put on. I've changed that. I just pushed the little button in the back and dropped it off. And then I put my end foot on and dropped the foot down on it. And let's see what happens. So I'm going to put my foot down. I'm going to drop my needle. And let's see which direction the stitch goes. It is going to the left. So I wanted to go to the left, but see how it's moving to the left. Okay. Second here, I got a piece of thread stuck. Sorry, I, I just cut my fingernails and I can't get a hold of anything. There we go. Okay, so it's going that way to the left. All right, so let's say we're sewing on a patch and we've gotten over to the end of where we want to go this way. Now I want to come down. So if I want look up here, going down straight this way is going to be number 95. So I'm going to type in the number 95 now, 95. Okay, so now it's going to go forward. Okay, and then I want to go back to the right. So that's number 94. So I'm going to type in number 94. Okay, and then I'm going to go back to the right. I don't know how square my, my box is going to be, but we'll see. I don't have anything really to help me, but I'll just kind of get it as close as I can. Okay, and then when I want to go back, this way, I am going to go back. The one that goes up is 92. So I'm going to hit 92. And then I'm going, and this is all in the same menu. And then I'm going to go back so we can line up with the first stitch. Okay. There we go. I think I got it. And then I can cut off. And I went all around in a square. It's sort of a square. I'm not quite quite straight, but you you get my you get my drift here. So I went all around and I never turned my fabric once, did I? Isn't that awesome? So that's a really cool feature, especially if you have to do some like mending or um, like I I had to sew like patches on like my campfire things and stuff like that. I wish I would have had this because then I could have been so much easier to sew because then you sometimes it was hard to get you know, it was hard to get the fabric in there the way you wanted it. So that is one of those new features on this machine, the BQ950 over the 700, the PS700, okay? The other thing was the tension. So let's look at this over here. So here's our straight stitch. See, it still says four over here for the, for the tension. Now there will be some stitches that will come up with a different tension. So let's see if I can find one. Um, this one here, this is the second thing I wanted to show you. So if I go to the leaves and it's going to say okay to cancel and that's fine. So I got my leaves here and let's look at some of the decorative stitches. Sometimes they will have a different number here. So let me see. Um, let me try number. Let's try number 35 and see what that one does. Okay, so see this one is different. This one says 3.6. So they adjusted the tension for this particular design. This particular design also takes the end foot. And this is one of those larger um, designs. And because this machine sews sideways, it can do these wider designs. So I'm going to sew this out so you can see, because this is a relatively wide, large design. In fact, I may run over my paper, run off my fabric. <laughs> Uh, just barely but see how wide see how big this is you can use these in small um like small borders on quilts and stuff and what i do to keep these straight is i try to keep it straight at the bottom but just let it go because it's going to do all this sideways sewing and that's why this machine can do these bigger designs is because of this that ability Okay, so it looks sort of like a wave. I've used this one several times because it looks sort of like a, a water wave. Okay. All right, so I'm going to run out of fabric, but I'm going to show you now what it looks. I'm going to cut this. Oops. And then see the waves? And see how wide they are? Because this machine, just like the other machines, is seven millimeters. But this one can sew sideways. So see, look, these are way bigger than seven millimeters, aren't they? So see, the PS700 could only do up to seven millimeters for the decorative stitches. This one has some stitches on it that are way larger than that. 
So that's because of that sideways sewing ability. So isn't that cool? That I just I think those are the neatest designs, and there's actually several of them here on this little second set that have are those wider ones that are kind of down here towards the bottom, and then they do have um, they ha they're wider and they have the sideways sewing. Okay, so like again. That was the other thing I wanted to show you is see with the auto tension, see it set that tension at 3.6 for that stitch because of the way it's produced, I'm sure. And the fact that it's sewing sideways, the tension needed to be slightly different. So the machine did it for you. So that's the couple of the things that are really cool. The other thing that's really cool is the fact that it also, you know, we talked a little bit about the lettering last time. So here's our lettering. But this one has uppercase letters and then it has all the lowercase letters on it. So to get to the letters, I can go down to my letter A. There's the straight kind of standard lettering. There's a cursive lettering. There's an outline lettering. There is a like a Greek alphabet. And there is a Japanese lettering. So there's still five. So it has the same number as the other one. But this one now I can do upper and lowercase letters. So what I like to do is I like to choose that um, pretty cursive one. It's actually very nice. But that one looks better if you do it in um, upper and lowercase letters. So let's go ahead. And since I have a kind of a short name, we'll, we'll, we'll make one that's a little longer. I'll, I'll spell out my whole, my whole first name. So we're going to go, we're in the cursive letters, and I want the capital letter J. So it's 10. So I'm going to type the word 10, the number 10. Second here. I got to get into the right one, just a minute. I touched the button wrong. Okay, I need to get rid of this one. There we go. Okay, now I think we're right. So we got 10 for the J. Okay, and then I want to do a lowercase a. So the lowercase a in this case is number 27, 27. And then the lowercase n is number 40. Okay, and then I'm going to type out my whole name. So the lowercase i is 35. And then the lowercase c is 29. And the lowercase e is 31. So that's what's neat about having the upper and lowercase letters because then you can, they look more like real writing and they're really nice for um, doing quilt labels. Okay, so let's sew out my name. And you can actually kern these a little bit. Kerning means to make the letters a little closer together. There's a couple settings that we could have changed to make them a little closer together, but these usually sew out in the default pretty close. And I like the low upper and lowercase ability. So that's the three big main differences in the abilities of the machine. What we looked at last week, this machine also does. Um, so we talked about like the saving ability and the um, some of the feet we talked a little bit about. Now I'm going to hit the cutter up here. And there's my name. And see how they kind of join together. Now I could have gotten these a little bit closer together because there's some there's there's a few little settings in the settings. And I know we went into the settings last time. So if you hit the little piece of paper that looks like a corner with a corner turned down, there are also um, little settings in here um, for, I think this one has all of that too. I have to look just to make sure. There's a little thing that, that lets things be like the elongation. And here's thread density and character spacing. So the character spacing, if you would go like negative, whoops, sorry, I have to get to the right button. I think it will let me to get to the right one here. There we go. Um, it will let me go up and make them wider apart, but not closer together. So the default is zero. So that's the normal setting where it is. But then if we want them a little further apart, we can we can use that. And we can also use the elongation 
um, for decorative stitches. So there's those, these are all on this section. So that's some of the settings that are there. And then these fine adjustments, vertical and horizontal, are also um, part of the decorative stitches. So then you can adjust those decorative stitches for the, the placement and to make sure that they line up nicely or, or that you can change their, their size a little bit. So that, that is what that little, those two little things mean. So this is also on this machine, like it was a 700. Okay. And everything else is the same, I think, in here. So I think we're good. I think we got, we, we kind of went through some of that last week. I think everything's pretty much the same. Yep. But it does give you the chance to do a little bit of adjustment with your decorative stitches, including the letters. Okay. So there is our lettering. That was one of the differences. I have lowercase letters on these and not just the uppercase. All right, so let's see, what do we wanna do next? Let's, let's talk about the things that come with this machine. So this one also has a few more accessories with it, which is really nice. Um, it comes with a couple, two or three extra things. So the one extra thing it comes with is actually a thread stand. So this is a thread stand that actually attaches to the machine. And I really like this because I, I very rarely put any thread down, laying down like this. I usually put my bobbins here and I like the thread stand to be standing upright. And then I put my thread up here. So this go, comes on this way this little lid comes off and it's, you have to squeeze it a little bit to get it off it's kind of hot once you get it stuck it comes off okay there's there's these little little knobs that go into the little holes here so you have to kind of squeeze them to get it off and then this can lay back here and then i can put my thread stand on so i'm going to lay my thread stand in in those same little holes like this and it just slides right in there. And then you have this on the top of your machine. And I use this almost all the time. I love this because then I can put my thread up here and up and over the little hole and you're gonna, or the little pole, and then you're gonna have it thread the same way. You're just gonna start down here and it's gonna stand up. So if you're using, if you quilt quite a bit and you're using like Orofil thread, it is a, it has an, oops, I missed the, there we go. Um, it has no cap on one end. So they really should be standing upright. These threads are fine to do either way, um, but I still stand them up most of the time. So that is the thread stand. So this one comes with the machine, okay? And that didn't come with the PS700. Um, let's see, the other thing, oh, this one is one thing as a quilter that I often like to use. And this is a different one. So let me bring this down so you can see a little better. But this one comes with a straight stitch uh, foot. So see, it has just a little hole in the middle. So that means you need to put the, the, the needle in the center needle position, which in my case, I'm going to go back to the regular setting, the regular um, set. And I have it set up so that the needle comes up in the center. So this is a straight stitch needle plate. So you can see it comes up in the center. Okay, you need to have your needle in the center and the foot has a little hole right in the center where the needle is going to go down. This is really great for piecing if you're having difficulty with some of the thread going down or like the, the fabric kind of wanting going down into this larger zigzag needle plate. So let me take this off so you can see. So like this is a zigzag plate. See, it has this longer hole in here. Okay, so if you're having trouble with your th fabric going down into that little hole too much if you put on a straight stitch plate. So it comes with this. A lot of the machines don't come with this. So this is a straight stitch plate that I can um, change this needle plate out and put this one on and see it just has the little hole. So then when you're piecing, you, you won't have quite so much of a difficulty with the fabric doing that because see, there's such a tiny hole. It's supported. In other words, the needle is supported all the way around, okay? This one is just supported on the front and the back in the center. This one, it's supported all the way around, okay? So this is a straight stitch needle plate and a straight stitch foot. So those come with this machine and they're normally extra, okay? So that's a cool little extra thing that comes with it. The, the thread stand is awesome. I love the thread stands. And then, of course, we also get our walking foot, okay, and the, the little guide 
for quilting, like straight line quilting, okay? And we also get the, um, the darning foot. So we're gonna put this on here in a minute, okay? The darning foot for free motion quilting. So I'm gonna show you how to put that on and I'm gonna show you how to put the walking foot on. And then we get some of the other ones that we got with the other machine, the piecing foot. So here's our quarter inch piecing foot. We would also have the center needle position for this. And it has a little guide on it that comes with the machine. Also that um, the zipper foot, that's also really good for piping. The one that is um, movable, this is such a good foot. And this comes with this one. I was, I'm, I'm always glad when a lot of the sewing machines come with this because this is like my favorite zipper foot and I can do piping with it too. Okay, and then it has the stitch guide foot. The PS700 had this too. And then it has the open toe foot. Okay, and the Teflon foot again. So this one is nice if you have to sew on, I, I sew on vinyl quite a bit and this works really great because it has that little Teflon coating on the bottom. Okay, so that's some of the feet that come with it, but the extra feet are those, you get the, the needle plate, the straight, the straight stitch needle plate and foot and the thread stand. So that's the extra. And then of course it comes with, you give me a second here. It comes with the extension table. So I don't have this extension table on today, but this is the extension table, just like the one that we saw last week that I had on the machine. And then they give you a really nice little spot because this one also has a knee lift like the 700. It gives you a nice little spot to store your knee lift so you always know where it's at. It stores in the bottom of the table. Okay, so that's the extension table. Same size as the one from the PS700. I just didn't put it on this week. So, all right. So let's talk a little bit about these feet. So we didn't talk about some of these feet last week. We did a little bit more basic stuff, but this one, since we talked a little bit about the screen and stuff with the 700, let's go ahead and talk about some feet. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to put on the um, walking foot and the darning foot. Give me a second, I gotta grab a quarter. My favorite screwdriver is a quarter. And I'm gonna go back here and this walking foot, and people ask me all the time, how do you put the walking foot on? It has its own shank. So this is the shank right here. And then this has to go over the needle bar. So we're gonna take off the shank that holds all the other feet. And that's this little thing right here. Okay, so I just unscrewed this screw right here and took the shank off. So here's the shank. So we're just gonna set that aside right now with the other feet. And then this foot goes on around that screw, just like the other shank did, but it's gonna kind of come from the side. And then the little fingers on this go over the little, they have to kind of go around the needle bar where the needle is. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna tighten this, loose this up a little bit so it'll slide in here. There we go. Make sure I got my little, probably can't see it very well, but it's on, it's around the little fingers that are kind of like this or around the needle bar, okay? And I'm just going to tighten this up so it's nice and tight. And that is how you install your walking foot. So there's the walking foot. And what's neat about this machine is it comes with the walking foot so that when we have it, I have a little bit of fabric here with some batting. So we'll use this a couple times today. But I'm going to go ahead and lay this down. And then with a the walking foot, you don't want to sew too fast. You want to give the chance for it to work. So what it's doing, it's an even feed foot. So what it does is it, it's got little feed dogs on the foot and there's feed dogs, of course, underneath. And it's feeding them more evenly this way because often when you have multiple layers of fabric, you get a scooch either on the top or the bottom. So this way you're more likely to have you keep your fabrics even, especially when you have batting, because I have a piece of batting in here, because it's got feed dogs on the top and feed dogs on the bottom. The other thing that's cool that comes with this is this little guide. We didn't talk about this, I just told you what it was. There's a little hole back on the back of the walking foot, and I'm just gonna slide this bar into that hole. And so then, let's say I want all of my lines to be about that far apart. That looks good. So what I'm going to do is after I make my first line, I'm going to lay this 
little guide right on that line that I already made. And then I'm going to continue to make other lines and they can all be the same. So I'm just gonna run, I'm looking at my guide and I'm running it along my line. And you can make it as any distance apart you want, okay? And then I'm gonna stop. So there's one of my lines. Well, then I wanna make another line. So then I'm gonna take that same guide and see, I didn't stay very straight. I'm kind of sitting at, a, at an angle, so I wasn't very straight. Let's see if I can do better this time. Okay, and then I'm gonna put that same guide right on this next line. And then they stay the same distance apart. So that is a one way of quilting with walking foot. Because you can do, straight line quilting is very popular with quilts now. So you can do all kinds of things with that, okay? And if you have one of these little guides in the back of your walking foot, it'll keep everything from scooching so you won't have a scooch on the bottom or on the top. Because sometimes, you know, if, if, you're, if it's not feeding well, the top fabric will scoot this way or the bottom fabric will be scooted out. With the walking foot, you're less likely to have that. Okay, then so that's that's one way that I could quilt. Let's talk a little bit more about quilting. So this machine also comes with this darning foot, and what a darning foot is is a free motion quilting foot. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take my walking foot off. Just going to unscrew that little same little screw, and they do give you a nice little round screwdriver with this machine. Um, that has that ha it's e easier to get in here, but I've always just used a nickel or a quarter. Okay, so here's my my walking foot, and there's there's that little hole where that little guide fits in in the back. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this darning foot on. So the darning foot also has its own shank. So this one's going to come up from the underneath. Okay, and I'm going to slide this on and slide it up around that little hole, and I'm going to tighten this down. And I'm going to set my machine up on a straight stitch with the needle in the center. Okay. So let's go over here and make sure I've got my needle in the center position, which is number three. Okay. Now, the one thing that I have found when I free motion, and I'm not a very good free motioner, um, I often have to slightly adjust my tension. So let's see what I have to do. The other thing I need to show you about free motioning is you, there's something you have to do. The feed dogs, oops, sorry, I've got you blurry now. It'll, it'll come back. Sorry about that. Um, over here on the back of the machine, I'm going to pull my free arm off. On the back of the machine, and the 700 has this as well, there's a little lever back here, and it's going to lower these feed dogs because when we free motion, we don't want the feed dogs up. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to flip that down, and my feed dogs are now down. Okay, so I just flip this down. Okay, so let's do a little free motion. I'm going to put my little free arm table back on. And normally I use my, my extension table when I'm free motioning, but I just had a real small piece of fabric today, so I could do it with the regular one. Okay. Now, when I free motion, I like to start with my center needle position. I want to put my foot down and I still want to be able to move. And this little foot is going to hop up and down. Okay. So there's a couple things that I have to do sometimes because I'm not a very good free motioner. I have to slightly adjust my upper tension sometimes. And I also have to adjust my presser foot pressure. Sometimes I have to go into the settings and make it a little less. So what I like to do is go into settings. I don't want the foot to come down so hard because I have problems with it kind of jerking me. So I can adjust that in here. I'm gonna go into my settings. I'm gonna go down until I get to, it's down here somewhere. Presser foot pressure, it's here somewhere. Yeah, presser foot pressure. So what I do is I make it, I go down to two just to make it a little less pressure so it doesn't bonk down so hard for me, okay? So I'm gonna leave it on two for this. And then let's see how I do. Sometimes I do okay. Now I am going to, to do something here. I'm gonna plug in a foot controller. And what I like to do when I free motion is I like to set my speed at about the clip that I feel comfortable with, which is about half speed, okay? That's where 
I work the best. And what my foot controller then becomes is my on off switch. I just floor it and then I let my foot off when I want to stop. So I do like to use a foot controller when I'm free motioning as, as little as I, I'm, like I said, I'm not very good at it. I know how to do it, but I'm not good at it. And I like to use the foot controller as my on off switch. So I'm just going to floor my foot controller now and my machine's going to start sewing. And then I'm going to, whoops, except that I re unthreaded my, no, maybe I didn't. I think it's okay. And then I'm going to start moving my fabric around. And this is about as fast as I can go. Okay. If you want to go a little faster, you move your speed here. And I, I've gotten, so when I find a, a speed, that's a little bit better for me. Just a little bit above. And I can get very even stitches because my machine continues to go the same speed all the time. Okay. This does not have a stitch regulator, but once I get the feeling of how it's moving, I do pretty well when I free motion and I always have the same speed. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and cut that off and let's look at the back. So this is the other thing sometimes I have to do. I look at the back. Now, so you can see, see I have some little lashes there. And so that means... I'm not a very good free motioner, so I often need to make my upper tension just a little bit tighter. So I'm going to take this number here because we can adjust this now. I'm going to go right here and I'm going to bring this up closer to the number five. Because for me, as like I said, as, as poor as I am at this, I often just need to help me a little bit with changing that tension. All right, so let's see how we do now. But I find that the speed control really helps me because then I don't have to worry about how fast the machine's going. It just goes the same speed all the time. All right, so let's look at the back now. I bet you it's a lot better. Oh, yeah. So see how much better it is? Remember the little lashes I had down here? I just increased the tension a little bit. Look, they're all gone. Okay. And again, I am not a good free motioner. But that is how that is one way to that I set up the machine. So the um, so I, I made it a little bit lower um, presser foot pressure so that it what doesn't hit so hard when it hits my fabric. And I also increase the tension to closer to about five up here. OK, and, and you see that there's no black box over that anymore. So the default for the straight stitch is on four. Okay, so when I go back to regular straight sewing, I want the number four on there. Okay, so that is just a little bit about quilting. So you know how to put these feet on that come with it. So these are some of the extra feet, maybe a setting that will help you. Now, the other thing I love doing with the sewing machine, and a lot of you don't realize that you can do this. I love, you know, we, we made a buttonhole last week. And we made this lovely buttonhole, but you know what? You can sew the buttons on with the sewing machine, because I don't like to sew buttons on. I've always hated it. The other thing I'm going to show you now, we have to put the feed dogs back up. OK, so I'm going to turn this machine around. And remember, whoops, let me get my foot controller unplugged here. So we're going to do this. Um, we're going to put this these feed dogs back up. OK, and that, that little switch back there. Let me turn this around so you can see it. OK, the little switch back here. We're going to flip it back the other direction. Okay, and then we're going to put, put this around, but I want to show you something. My feed dogs didn't come up. Oh, no, what do I do? They didn't come up. Well, in order for them to come up, you need to go up here to the needle down, needle up, and guess what? They're now up. You just need to needle down, needle up. And your feed dogs, after you've reset that switch in the back, you do have to needle down, needle up, and your mach and your feed dogs will come back up. So they're now back up. You can see them up here. Okay. So that is very important to do that. So don't be afraid if it doesn't come right back up with, with the button. You'd have to just needle down, needle up, and it'll come back right. They'll come right back up. Okay. So I like to sew buttons on with the machine. And there's a really cool foot for that. And a a special stitch. 
So I am going to go get my special foot for that. And it is the M foot. Okay. This is the buttonhole foot or the button foot. I always call it the sew the buttons on foot. I'm going to grab some thread fabric here over here. And we're going to put on our shank. I got to find my shank again. So I have to put my regular shank back on. Okay. So we'll slide that on under here and tighten that one up. Okay, so we got that back up. Now this is a fairly small button that I have, and this one has four holes. So we're gonna do each side of the butt of the hole. So we're gonna pick two. Now what I like to do often with this, so there's a couple settings on this button, okay, on this uh, foot. The button goes in between here because it covers up the feed dogs, okay? And these little lot dots right here are where the holes are. And the holes in most buttons are the same distance apart. Did you know that? That's something that I didn't know until I started sewing them on. And there's also a little thing right here. I don't know if you can see it. This little thing right here pushes the pushes in and pulls out. So if you want the sh there to be a little bit of a shank on your button so that there's a little thread like underneath the button to, to have it be a little looser, then you put that out because then it will, like if you're buttoning into something a little heavier, this one, I want it to be tight. So I'm going to pull that back so that there, that little thing doesn't come out. Okay. Then I'm going to take my button and I'm going to slide. I like to slide the button into the foot before I um, put it in the machine, just because I can see better what I'm doing to get my little holes in my, in my, um, in the button with the red dots. So I can kind of see what I'm doing. And then I'm going to put this over here. I'm going to slide this in and I might still need to adjust it a little bit. Okay. Okay. Then I'm going to put this under here and I think I slid it a little bit. I haven't got my glasses on, so hopefully I can see, but I'm going to show you, I, I like to check to make sure that I am not going to hit my uh, button. And this is the only time I use my hand wheel. So I'm going to reach over and I'm going to choose my stitch first. I forgot that. I have get my stitch so this machine has a stitch just for buttons to sew buttons on and it's in that first menu right here and it's number 90. so i'm going to touch the little corresponding menu first over here on the screen so it's this one right here and then i'm going to type in the number 90 like that and it sets up my settings for me and my width because most buttonhole buttons are the same width okay so i'm going to then take my hand wheel let me get this down a little bit further so you can see closer i'm just going to verify that i've got my button in there correctly and i do so i'm okay i like to check it first then i'm going to use my needle down needle up button to make sure that my needle is in the upright position again i like to start my stitch all over again after I do that. So I'm just going to type in the number 90 again, just to make sure that I'm back to the beginning. Okay. Then I'm going to slow this down a little bit and I'm just going to let the machine sew and it's going to go back and forth and then it's going to tie off and drop the needle. And that's it. I got half of the button done. So let's do the other half of the button. Wasn't that easy? So now we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to push this forward. Might have to turn it around. This one will have to turn around. Okay. Sometimes it's easier to take it out. I tell I like to take this off into this way. There we go. I have trouble with the smaller button. Sometimes I need to take it off and do it this way. All right. So we're going to make sure that we catch those other two. Put the foot back on. Okay. And I'm going to do the same thing. I want to make sure that I'm okay before I start. Okay, I think I got it in there, right? Okay, and then I'm going to needle down. Oh, my needle went back up, so we're okay. And I'm gonna go back over here. I wanna start from the beginning. I'm gonna type in the number 90, like that. Then it will sew back and forth, and then it will tie off. And then I'm gonna hit the cutter, and I've got my button sewed on. Isn't that cool? I love sewing buttons on this way. I don't like to sew buttons on and I never have. So there we go. There's our button. 
And then if we would have made our buttonhole for the same button, we would have used this button in the back of our, clamped it in the back of our buttonhole foot like we did last week right here. Then we would have had the exact size buttonhole we needed. And then, then we could have sewn it on with the sewing machine and buttoned our button. So look at there. Isn't that cool? So that was something I wanted to show you was sewing the buttons on. I really, I do a lot of buttons like on Kimberbell pillows and stuff and they, and, and there's so many of them sometimes. So that's how I sew all the buttons on. It's awesome. Okay. So this is the BQ 950. As you can see, this is a really nice machine. It's, it's super user-friendly. It has a lot of nice accessories. It works the same as the PS 700, but it has a few more things. So there's one more machine in the series um, above this one, and it's called the BQ 1350. Now we did that machine about a year ago. So if you want to see that machine, the video on that machine, so you can see more information about that one, the next one up, it gives you a couple more um, options. It gives you a um, automatic height adjustment. So it has a pressure, presser foot pressure adjustment that's automatic. It also gives you the little button here that will raise and lower your foot. Has a pivot feature. So there's another button over here. That one you can go see it either on our the Shield Sewing Center Facebook page. It might be easier to find it on my YouTube channel, Sew Along with Jan, under the Shields Live playlist. So that would be the BQ1350. And then there's a machine that's a couple below that we we did before called the Presto. It's the Baby Lock Presto 2. And we did that about a year ago also. And that's also um, either on our Facebook page or in my YouTube on my YouTube channel. And the brother version of that is the PS500. So you if you watch that, then you would see all four of these machines that are in this line. So um, there's, there's the 500, 700, 950, and 1350, and they're all the same body, but they have a ver variation of abilities as they go up. So we've done all of them in that series now. And then next week, I hope to do one of the larger machines. I'll either do the BQ 3100 or the 25, it's probably going to be a 2500 because the 3100 I think is, is on back order right now. So I hope to do one of the bigger machines that has a few more abilities and another, a different type of walking foot and stuff. So we'll, we'll work, we'll talk about a little bit bigger machine next week. Okay. So does anybody have any questions before we say goodbye? So this is the BQ 950. It's a cool machine. The, all of these machines are so neat and they're easy to learn and they sew beautifully. All right, let me find my microphone here. Maybe there it is. All right. So does anybody have any questions about these? So most of these machines work about the same way, but we have done all four in this series. So you, you might just have to go find them on, on YouTube. It'd be a little easier. Um, on Sew Along with Jan under the playlist, Shields Live. And that way you can find, and you can watch all of them in there. And then you can kind of compare the differences in the, the um, abilities. And I tried to show, you know, each ability um, for as, as I went through. So um, that way there's new things on each one. So, okay. All right. So next week we'll be back with one of the bigger machines. So it's either going to be the BQ 2500 or the 3100. I haven't decided which one yet. Depends on which one we have in, in, at the time. And those have a couple of new abilities to them that are just awesome. So I hope that it's the 3100 because I, I, I really like that machine too. So, all right. So we'll see you next week on Thursday for another sewing machine. And I think maybe in June, we may have um, quilting in your embroidery machine month. So we've been talking about what we, about quilting. And I think we might actually show you different ways to quilt in your embroidery machine. Um, so we may do that next in June. So, all right. So thank you everybody. And I will see you next week at the same time. So three or two o'clock on Thursday afternoon. Thanks everybody. Have a good day.